The boy is now the social currency. The boy is the yeah. social currency. So getting him adds value. I'm Zainab. And I'm Mia. And welcome to another episode of Sprinkles and Spice. And not all girls play nice. Some are the literal spawn of Satan. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Remember when we first started and all we do is laugh into the mic? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we've we improved. We've definitely come up. We've come a long way. And I hope we we improve even more. Someone told me the other day, like, yeah, I love your episode, but you guys are always laughing. I'm like, do you want us to always be crying? Like, it's comedy. I mean, it is funny. You remember that both. one comment? Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I think, I think, ugh, I'm so bummed that we deleted that comment. We were so in our feelings back then. No. Now we just don't care about hate comments. But remember that comment when she said, is it the now lady that we in just... black? <laughs> Is it laughing out of context? Did you delete that comment? Did we delete it? I don't think we ever did. I don't know. We need to we need to recover it. Remember when I changed your name to Lady in Black? I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was so funny. I thought uh, I hate we you. made a song. Lady in Black uh, is laughing out, out of context. context. <laughs> you be so, you used to get so bad when you used to do that. I, I used to get so triggered. It was hard in the beginning, like getting used to people commenting mean things or just it, it wasn't really constructive. It was just like, mean. Mean, just you know, and she was like, she's laughing out of context. Uh, I she, feel like as I, a reporter. No, oh, let's yeah, not yeah, forget. Yeah, yeah. She as, said, a reporter. as a reporter and a journalist or a reader or something like she's that. Like, as a reporter and, and reader. I think. And reader. I don't know. Anyways, shout out her. <laughs> I feel like I was never that pressed about the mean comments, mainly because <laughs> I just didn't care. I was really? like, you're still watching. <laughs> I feel like I was like, you're still watching and you're still commenting. And I feel like it's good for, for our I mean, algorithm. lately we've had an interesting number of comments from triggered men. <laughs> Okay, so I'd like to say shout out to all the men that watch and that actually like us and that come up to us because there's a bunch of men that comment such mean things. I'm like, we've never had that from girls. Why are you so mad? Yeah. I mean, we, we let's not, uh, no, let's not generalize. We've had mean comments from girls as well. Yeah, but I but... support women's rights and women's wrongs. You know this about me. <laughs> <laughs> but these comments mainly came, um, or these comments were mainly made on our uh, episode of, uh, about Love is Blind, Happy Baby Reunion. Yeah. And I'm like, why are these men so mad about our takes? These are our opinions and they're so mad. We have more opinions, you guys, because Love is Blind, Happy Baby Reunion drama is not done. Also, we, we always have opinions. Yeah. <laughs> that no one asked for it. I mean, that's the thing where someone's like, why are you trying to impose your opinions on people? No, 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 no. I'm like, because <laughs> this is show. our podcast and not yours. Cry about it. <laughs> Go cry about it. <laughs> Go cry about it. Go cry to your mommy. Oh, girls said mean things about men. They generalize <laughs> on their own podcast. <laughs> you know what's so it's funny? Wild. It's like, I feel like no one's that mad at Joe Rogan. And my guy has been doing crazy shit on his show for like 20 years. Honestly, Joe Rogan is like the hero of men. You guys like I praise him so much. You hero, ride, baby. You ride, <laughs> you ride his, his coattails. Yeah, coattails. coattails. Yep. Mm. You ride for Joe Rogan so hard. <laughs> you ride on Don. Um, but yeah, basically, like Joe Rogan gets away with so much shit, but God forbid a woman speaks. Back to Love's Blind Heavy B um, drama, because that is not done, apparently. Um, Esma recently went on Hikmet Wehbi's uh, podcast. Friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. <laughs> Shout out Hikmet Wehbi. Um, So not only Esma, I think Mido went on there and we also the, uh, all saw Shafiq the Dunya and Shafiq well, yeah, uh, yeah. episode. And all of them just cannot stop talking about Noor. Babe, Esma. Baby girl, what are you doing? I think, you know what's sad? Okay, so my thoughts on Esma is like, during the show, I liked her so much because I thought she was really like fun and she was very like individual. And I think the only time I was sort of like weirded out was with Khattab when like they, the edit made it look like, oh, he has money and all of a sudden she's interested, which again, we, we all know editing can make you look like a villain if they want to. So I was like, I was like, okay, whatever. But after the show, like the reunion, she fell off for me. And now seeing her just talk nonstop about Noor, I'm like, Asma, you yeah. have you have some damage control to do, my girl. 
please stop talking about Noor. Stop it. Yeah. So she went on the pod and she claimed that Noor stomped on other people's feelings. Uh, and she she said that she hurt Mido and that then she came off as a victim. But we saw how he acted during the reunion. Uh, yeah, but like that that's that, that I think that's the part that's that's triggering is that she is perceiving it in a different way. I'll tell you what, I think Maybe Esmet Moon Alamido. Like I think she just because she has like a really good camaraderie with him, and clearly she just doesn't get along with Noor. I think she fails to see the other side of it, which all of us do. Like all of us have moments like you know, like if you're friends with someone, you're more inclined to see their side than the others. But I think objectively speaking, she has to remove herself and really maybe rewatch the reunion and see everyone's behaviors towards her and try to sort of empathize. I can dislike someone, but I still have to empathize with them. Exactly. And that's the thing, is that I, I disagree with her that Noor came off as the victim because I don't think Noor plays the victim no. at any point. No. Like, she did not no. play the victim. If anything, I think she came off as a hero to a lot of women. And that's why I think Esma is triggered. And I think she came on this podcast to try to reframe herself post-show yeah. at the expense of Noor. Yeah. Because, like... It, and we saw this in the reunion. It was kind of like um, scapegoating. Yeah, 100%. And Noor was an easier target for everyone because she did not conform to the expectations she of most of the group. She didn't try to be likable. And she I think, was very direct and bold in herself. I think that's the thing. I think we've gotten to a point now in TV where we want people to be so likable and to be so like crowd-pleasing. Like... I'm nice. I'm non-materialistic. Yeah, Th people know what to say to come across as likable on TV. Noor doesn't want to be likable. Mm -hmm. I don't think she cares. She's like, I want materialistic things. And if you don't see that I have depth, that's okay because I know I have depth. And a lot of people doubt her depth. And I think we forget that you can be materialistic and deep. You can want money. I, I wouldn't and, say and it's materialistic, things. honestly. No, no. But like, she says like she she expects men to treat her to things. She wants nice things. Like yeah, she likes traditionally yeah. more materialistic things there's nothing wrong with that but what's wrong is assuming that you can't have both yeah you can be materialistic or like materialistic things and have depth to you one does not negate the other exactly but i think on tv we sort of like the one dimension like you're either materialistic or you're deep or you're smart or you're we, can, we have to label mm -hmm. people as one thing only we put people in, in boxes. boxes yeah yeah and i also think that noor has a high level of confidence which i think triggers other people and I think to other people it comes across as arrogance yeah, cocky, because it triggers yourself. their own self-esteem issues and unresolved I guess conflicts maybe with yeah. themselves and their identity so she triggered everyone she triggered everyone everyone was triggered by her yeah and also like one thing I do want to point out because Esma was saying that oh she hurt Dunya as well by calling Dunya insecure to me I don't think she called dunya insecure she was more constructive about it i don't think it was a personal attack no. i think it was constructive feedback but i think as an insecure woman you would consider that a personal attack i think dunya is young and i've said it before i think dunya has a lot of growth to do you can tell dunya is still insecure dunya listen objectively speaking i think dunya is a beautiful girl she is I think she has such a gorgeous face i think she's cute i think you know like She's 24, 25. Like, ultimately, I think she needs to grow up. And I think later on, if she really works on herself, she's going to rewatch all of that and be like, okay, did I come from a place of jealousy and insecurity? Maybe. Could I have worked on myself? Yeah. Because at the end of she, I'll never forget when she dismissed her and said, I'll take advice from anyone except for you. Yeah. I was like, you didn't need to do that. I will never forget the way she mocked her. Yeah. If you're saying Noor hurt Dunya's feelings, then what did Dunya do? Yeah. Just because Noor didn't take offense to it doesn't mean that it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But because Dunya took offense to Noor telling her that you should work on your on being more more secure and look inward and be introspective, then Noor hurt Dunya's feelings. Like it makes no sense. Yeah, and just sitting idly by when your man is insulting a girl. Like yeah. at the end of the day, like I don't care how much you love your man. And I mean, we've all we've all been in situations where we justify things for our partners. We'll get into the liner. Yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you still have to maintain an objective eye. You know, like this is your partner here, is he's a reflection of you. If you're gonna allow your man to talk down to other women and think that's not gonna 
hit you one day and he's not going to act like that with you, you're delusional. And I think she yeah. just does it out of fear. She wants to be like, she thinks she got the prize. There's that like, oh no, Noor won him, but I got him. So I can't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a lot of inner tur turmoil, I think, within Dunya. Yeah. And um, have you seen the videos of their, uh, they got engaged again, Dunya yeah. and Shafiq. Yeah. And I think what Shafiq is doing is he's also trying to reframe himself because he got control. attacked. He's trying to do damage control at the expense of Dunya. And Dunya obviously is eating it up. And we've seen so many v videos of Dunya still talking about Noor. Like, you guys, you were the ones that made her so important. You were the ones that pushed her on this pedestal and made people, you know, take her side and, and, and uh, you know... She's just, for some reason, she's the main character in all of these people's lives or experience of love is blind. You could have gone to love is blind, Habibi, and looked at Noor objectively and said, okay, well, she wants different things. Well, leave it at that, but let it bother you this much. I think I'll just never really understand why she got under their skin so much other than she reflected something that maybe they wanted. Like maybe it's that sense of I'll just be myself and I really don't care what everyone else thinks. Because it's I hard. Think, yeah. It's hard to be on TV and not care what anyone else thinks. And I think we, we've we experienced that. You know, like yeah. it's, it's hard putting ourselves out there ultimately and having feedback come up to us. Not just putting yourself out there. I think this is something we see, we've seen on the show and we see every day. And I think it's backed by research as well. Science. <laughs> science. <laughs> this is science a science says, podcast. <laughs> um, that people who are very confident mm -hmm. and self-assured inadvertently like they provoke other people yeah i agree like how does she get to be confident and i don't so i think that's what happened with noor yeah yeah, yeah i agree you know what i mean I agree. so something else that happened in very recent times so as you guys know i am obsessed with love island uk <laughs> and i was very involved with the whole like Molly May and Tommy Fury thing, because to me, it was the biggest thing since Ashley yeah. and Cheryl. Like, no, I remember up. when it happened and you called me and you were like, no, you do not understand. And then I you spent an hour spent, yeah. and, and I've never spent an hour and a half talking about my life, but I had to spend, <laughs> because I still have to say. She was like, just bringing me up to speed with this whole I, drama. I told you, like, I think I told you from like the beginning to the end why this was like the biggest thing culturally since Ashley Cole and Cheryl Cole's breakup. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Tommy Fury and Molly May was such a big cultural phenomenon because we really saw like a love story unfold on, unfold on TV. And these people like because we saw so much of their lives and because they were so public and were so involved as girls, like we were very involved with Molly May because she opened up the doors to her home. Seeing the drama occur with their split, we all knew it was due to cheating because everyone sort of knew that Tommy had a reputation. You know, if you're a little bit on the internet or you're a little bit involved with like that UK side of pop culture, you know that Tommy is sort of like, I don't say albeit, but he's a bit of an an airhead he's yeah. nice but he's an airhead and there's rumors and obviously molly may is a huge cultural phenomenon you know like everything she touches turns to gold yeah she is very public about her relationship and she recently uh, did an interview with vogue british vogue where she didn't really talk about what happened with her and tommy too deeply to protect their kid mm -hmm. and then the other woman that tommy <sighs> cheated with came out on podcasts doing TikToks and acting crazy. And I don't want to give this woman like yeah. more clout. So oh we shouldn't my say God. her name. Yeah. So basically what happened, this video is going viral on TikTok. It's a clip from this podcast where this other woman who apparently Tommy cheated on uh, Molly May with is sitting there with three men and gloating about how she was part of the reason why they broke up and how he cheated on Molly May with her and how he put her in first class and how and they met at a club in Dubai. Out of her in first class and like yeah no I love how she was like I even have the videos one of the guys was like he cheated on Molly May with you I know and she didn't catch like the 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 undertone of that where yeah. he was like in disbelief that he chose you over Molly May. And she was like, yeah, I even have the videos. The fact that you have to bring up the videos means that you're so insecure and you need that proof. Like, and obviously the, 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 the you know, like that him saying that is evidence of him sort of being like uh, i don't be um, that girl but he it's misogynistic you know like oh you you're not pretty and you know what i mean like okay molly may outwardly does take care of us like she's a beautiful girl okay but everyone's yeah. beautiful like we're not here to like shame women but i think this woman is less manicured than molly may you know molly may wouldn't yeah. go out 
dressed like that, looking like that. Like she she likes a certain appearance. You know, she appeals to the girlies because she's very like well put together. Yeah. And this girl, objectively speaking, she doesn't really take care of herself yeah. in that same Mia way. Yeah, trying to be PC. <laughs> No, I get what you're saying. No, you're a hundred percent correct. You know, like, yeah. I, I'm not here to comment on girls' looks. Yeah. No, I'm not here to comment on her but, looks yeah, I mean, either. Objectively speaking, my girl is not taking care of herself the same way. Yes. And and it wasn't just that that triggered me. It was how she was sitting there all smug, so happy. And and the embarrassing part is that she didn't clock the reaction that these men had to her. Like, just because they're sitting there laughing with you, that doesn't mean they they respect you. It doesn't mean this is something you should be proud of. But I feel like what we learned from this is that this girl is just happy that now she feels like she is on the same level as Molly Mae and that she is, or if not, maybe better. Because I mean, I would argue, yeah, she thinks she won. She thinks she won because they, because broke, up. they broke up. And she's like, they broke up because of me. Exactly. And that's why she wanted to make it about herself. So now she thinks that her value is, has gone up. Is, is gone up. Yeah. Which we have to, I think... I mean, I, not to diagnose her also, but we have to address that, like, this girl is not really... No, she's unwell, babe. She's not... Re There's something slightly off about her. Like, yo, again, we're not psychiatrists. We're not going to sit there and tell yeah. you what's wrong with her. No, but you know but the other videos weird. that have gone uh, viral, like, people are talking about these other videos that she used to create before this uh, podcast episode went viral. She would um, take videos of herself with her dad yeah. sleeping and she would just like take her clothes off and throw them at her dad and see if he wakes up. And if he wakes up, she just runs to her room and it's like and films it. It's <laughs> Tarek Tarek is is laughing, laughing. <laughs> but it's actually very disturbing. No, I mean, it is very disturbing. I'm sorry. It's a need for attention that's almost like concerning. Like I, I think this girl needs like a, a psych evaluation, you know, like she's a bit yeah freaky like she freaks me out and even like her videos like her facial expression when she looks at the camera like there's something so disturbing looking at her like it kind of freaks me out and i'm not shocked that tommy didn't catch on you know yeah and i think she's trying to trigger molly may she's trying to get a reaction out of molly may because yeah. then if molly may gives her attention she won she won because i think she's obsessed i think she's obsessed with yeah. molly may well, we're going to get into that yeah. uh, in a bit. We're going to get into the darker side of insecurity today. Yeah. And we're going to start talking about our current favorite show right now. Yes. <laughs> Mia's not up to date. No, I'm three episodes away from the finale She's of Tell three Me Lies. Episodes away. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about Tell Me Lies. Mm. You guys, if you haven't watched this, I, if you haven't watched the Pause show. the episode and go binge it. Go binge it. And then come back. Yeah. We're going to try not to spoil it, but, you season, know. Season one's been out for two years, guys. So if you haven't seen it, it's really not a problem. Just in case. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> okay. It's like it, it's like when people like, if we talk about a historical show or like a docuseries and people are like, don't spoil it. This is this is history. Okay. It's yeah. old now. <laughs> season two just came out. It's been out for like a month and some change. But season one has been out for a few years. You guys just go watch it. Yeah. It's a great show. I think what I love about the show is that it, puts like these deep psychological issues that we all have but probably are not aware of at the center of of the 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 show you know what i mean yeah. it's at the forefront and it, it it triggers you in such a way it's so realistic like i was telling zina i was like there's something about the show that's so freaky yeah it's like the dialogue and the facial expressions and like you, if you look at your phone, you miss like the millisecond of like the eyes and whatever. Like it's so realistic. The awkwardness. That that's why it almost like hits you even harder because you're like, oh my god, this is real life. Like, and I also think this is for me at least the most accurate depiction of a college show I've ever seen in my life. I think if you went to school outside of the Middle East, you can sort of understand campus life and and like that environment a bit more and sort of like how it's like a bubble. Whereas yeah. maybe here, because everyone lives at home, it doesn't hit them as hard. But definitely that awkwardness of like going to school and being like, I'm an adult now, but also I'm a kid and I don't know how to process feelings and things and how yeah. do I make friends and all of that sphere. And sort of thinking like college is a new start. If you're here, yeah. obviously it's not the same. But if you go abroad, like how do you become a new person and how that all affects you mentally. Yeah. I think one thing that was a, a main theme in the show was the insecurity and in the different dynamics, whether it was in the relationships or the friendships as well, and, and how it affected those dynamics. And 
I mean, this is what we're going to be talking about today is how insecurity can be so harmful sometimes, which I think is what happened in a lot of these relationships. I think all of them. All I would them, argue yeah. insecurity. So the main cast, like the, the the core cast, I think all of them, you see how insecurity affects every aspect of their life, even down to the way that they see themselves and even down to the way that they present their appearance, you know? Yeah. So I think the first person I want to talk about sort of is Pippa as like an example. You want to start off with Pippa? I actually do. All right, let's go. Let's start off with Pippa. So Pippa, I think for anyone that studied abroad, they can sort of understand how she wants to shed the skin of who she was in high school going into college. Yeah. And sort of like that. And I think that's a that's something that you might do at every turning point of your life, whether it's going to a new school or going to a new job or even a, a new friendship group. Like yep. you sometimes feel the need to shed who you were in the past. And we can see that throughout the, the show, she morphs into whoever she thinks she has to be in order to be accepted. And it's almost like a shield, you know? Yeah. So I think we see it in her relationship with Wrigley, but also in her friendships. She, I think her insecurity, not just attacks, her insecurity makes her hyper aware of how she's perceived yeah. by others. And so she wants to come across as like superior mm. in a way. So that's why she plays the cool girl, yeah. even with Wrigley. Yeah. Like she's always like, oh, I'm, I, 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 don't, I care. don't care. This doesn't affect me. No, 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 no. And we see that like, you know, how, how Brie and Lucy kind of have these side conversations about mm. her. They have the side eye. Yeah. And you know what's so funny is that you and me do that side eye all the time. No, but it's true. <laughs> Stop telling people all our secrets, Mia. No, <laughs> Tell <but> me lies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like it, I really and I so usually in shows when you see girls side eyeing, right? Like it's very dramatic. But like with Tell Me Lies, what I like is that it's like a millisecond of just and sometimes they don't even talk about it. It's just in that moment. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Like it's so specific. And I think with Brie, for example, her insecurities being like adopted and not coming from a stable home and all that. So Brie changes her appearance. Yeah. As she grows to portray whoever she thinks she has to be in order to be desired because Brie just wants to be liked because she's yeah. a foster kid. No, and not just that. I feel like Bree's insecurity makes her more passive. Yeah. So if you see in the beginning, she's she's very passive. Yeah. yeah. And and a lot of times they make jokes at her expense. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What and I mean? she just says nothing because she wants to keep the peace, but also exactly. she wants to be liked so desperately. I mean, I get it. I'm sure as a as a foster kid, you probably have attachment issues, issues or mm -hmm. or abandonment issues, uh, not attachment issues. Sorry, uh, yeah. abandonment <laughs> issues. So. Obviously, you think if you react, then you're going to get abandoned. If you act in a certain way, you're going to get abandoned. So I feel like she tries to keep the peace a lot and be, like we said, like very passive and easy person to be around. You know what I mean? She even keeps asking. Do you notice when she would keep asking different people, do you think I'm pretty? Yeah. And I, I, that, that was, I don't know why as a girl. That was very hard to see. Yeah. I mean, also as a as an 18 year old, we have to think. I mean, I, I'm still not sure about she's, her she's, age. She's supposed to be 19 in season two. So yeah, 18 season one. Okay. Yeah. So as an 18 year old, I get it. Like you, you are very insecure about your looks. Yeah. Especially I'm assuming like if you're shoved into that situation, you're in college, you're in dorm rooms, you're surrounded by a lot of girls and guys and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I'm sure it brings up some sort of insecurity around your looks. And also physical appearance. I mean, as much as people pretend like it's not, is a currency, you know, it's especially in that environment, you know, like in college, I mean, everyone, everyone's sort of starting off in the same point. We're all freshmen. We all don't know what we're going to do with our lives. So what do you have? Money and looks. That's yeah. your social currency in college. I mean, at least that's what it was like when, and your intelligence, of course, but yeah. that, that's not, that's not the immediate first thing yeah. that those girls seem to care about. No, Lucy I cares about it. Yeah. Once she sees Diana. So I think with with Brie, what happens is that she allows her more dominant friends yeah. to overshadow her. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And, and that's why I think she's close to Lucy, because I think Lucy also enjoys being the more dominant one in their friendship. Um, so taking it back to Lucy, what you said, how she cares about um, 
basically cares about her social currency and and basically like there is this question about is she obsessed with steven or is she obsessed with diana yeah yeah and we all know the truth yeah, I mean, we all I, know the truth for me the main takeaway i mind you guys i binged first season two days ago and like one day and i rewatched it with her <laughs> for me lucy i thought after i saw season one i was like Okay, she cares about Diana. This is all yeah. about Diana. For some reason, she has in her head that she has to compare herself to Diana. And Lucy's insecurity, I think, isn't linked to her looks because she feels like she has, you know, like she has guys that want her all the time. But I think to her, it's linked to what she can do. You know, like if she's mm. smart enough, if she if she can achieve something enough, like she feels compared to Diana, like belittled. It's not just that. So with when the show starts, like we see Lucy being portrayed as very apathetic. I, I think maybe she must have been depressed because she doesn't have interest Emotion. for anything. Not just emotions for for people, like even um, she just passes. drive. She doesn't have she didn't have drive. And when when we see her meet Stephen for the first time, she didn't even like him. You could see her actually like physically. Well, she was recoiling. Away she was still... stepping away. She was against yeah. the wall. She was not attracted to him. The only she only became interested in Stephen when she found out about Diana, yeah. when she found out that Diana is not only a high performing student, she is on track to becoming a lawyer. Yeah. She is the president of her sorority, yeah. I believe. She uh, she hosts heads. charities. She's likable. She does She's all the head things. of the a cappella group. Of I mean, <laughs> that, <laughs> that I hated her for that. Yeah, like, same. girl, no, stop. You're just being annoying right now. Yeah, she's so annoying. And, and not only that, like, I love that, but she's so annoying sometimes. <laughs> she really is. She's that girl that you love to hate for no reason. Yeah, and it's like Mosquito, the girl didn't do anything wrong, wrong but you're just like, Shh, shut up. But she has everything going for yeah, her. Yeah. You know what I so mean? So you so kind of can... have to hate her. I get like, it. In yeah. a way, like imagine the freshman girl, Lucy, doesn't care about anything, going through life, going through the motions, sees Diana doing and achieving. Of course you hate and her. And not only that, you have a rich family. Yeah, her family yeah. has a, a freaking penthouse in Tribeca or what is not a penthouse, an apartment in Tribeca. A loft. A, a night, loft. But yes. I mean, that loft was crazy. Oof, I would kill for that loft. I was like, Honestly, I was in like, Tribeca too? I was like, Girl. I know everyone makes a big deal about Evan being rich, but low key, I think Diana's Nobody's richer. Diana. Like, <laughs> Diana's body. A loft in Tribeca. It was just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Just sitting there empty. Empty. Um, but yeah, so, so we saw that. We saw how when Lucy started you know being obsessed with diana that's when she became more interested in steven yeah yeah because she was like oh but you want this guy yeah. and he wants me so kind so of I like win. this this chicken and molly may that we were talking about yes, earlier exactly it's the same thing where it's like if i get with steven then that means i'm on the same level as diana well, or i'm better because i took her man the boy is now the social currency the boy is the yeah. social currency so getting him adds value to which you. we see a lot we see this. Well, I mean, that's sort of what dating is like, right? So I had this conversation with someone quite recently. It was like, uh, guys date girls that will impress their friend group. So who do they usually go for? They want the guy, the girl that every guy wants. Yeah. And girls date guys that other girls will find impressive. So that's not looks. So in the same way that guys want the hot, gorgeous girl, whatever. Girls want the guy that's like successful, great career, and not like the dream boy. Yeah, but both are social currency. Exactly. I mean, a, a lot of times girls will also look at a guy's exes. Yeah, and be like, "How do I get in that same caliber? Yeah. Like, if I date him, then I'm automatically like in the these. same. Yeah, yeah, in the same. I'm uh, one of those girls. Exactly. It's crazy. So that's what I think happened with Lucy and Steven. But yeah. then. His obsession with her, I, I still don't understand. Let's talk about Stephen's insecurity. Yeah. So <laughs> Stephen obviously comes from a broken home. Uh, his and mom, very uh, emotionally abusive mom. Oof, his mom. His mom wrecked me. By the way, his 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 mom was a really hard yeah. watch for me. She was such a hard watch, but it it was so telling of why he acts this way. Like the reason why Stephen acts this way is obviously because he learned it at home from his mom because his mom is doing it to him so he in return is doing it to everyone else yeah i think especially seeing steven around his family is almost like seeing he's like a shield a little bit whereas when you see him around his friends he's an entirely different person he's his mom and at some point spoiler alert for season two 
skip to 10 seconds. His sister says, you're just like mom. And you see him sort of lose yeah. it. I mean, one thing that you can tell for sure about Steven is that he's a covert narcissist. 100 And he... I don't think that covert, by the way. I don't know. Are the others acting blind? I don't know. It's interesting because how does he maintain his... I mean, because we all know he, he... Because they're 20 years old. They're 21 years old. You. And I don't think anyone's at his level of manipulation. He leverages people's insecurities for his own good. He was, he was terrified. Watching him puppeteer the actual destruction of everyone's lives, and I really mean like the destruction, destruction yeah. of everyone's life, was so freaky. And I think... You said, I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. And you're like, think about it. We all know someone that's like that. And I actually do know someone that's like yeah. that. Or I did know someone that was like that. And I think all of us, all of us has have known someone that's like that. And if you're lucky, you, you get to realize that this is who they are. But most of the time, this person gets away with it. Yeah. And a lot of times this person's insecurities stem from their inadequacies and their failures. And these people are the most dangerous people to be around. Because they're the most insecure. They are the most insecure person. And honestly, a lot of times for a specific reason, like we saw his family environment yeah. is terrifying. He doesn't have money. His mom cut him off. Like the guy is living on like survival mode at all times. He, he's definitely 100% in survival mode all the time. And that's why I, I think he's Learn to exploit people's insecurities to work in his favor, mm -hmm. which is so scary. Like you, you want to sympathize with him, but you can't. There is no redeeming quality with this man. No. With, like with Lucy, at least like, you know, you sympathize with her sometimes. Because you feel you, for her, even though she annoys the hell out of me sometimes. Because you see yourself and you're like, as much as, listen, you can deny it as much as you want. Yeah. We have all had a bit of Lucy in us at some point. Like I remember defending the undefendable. And that's why I think season one is it's hard and you kind of hate Lucy and she gets on your nerves, but you're like, okay, but I've also probably defended someone that I could not have, I shouldn't have defended. And then I saw and I realized, and I think season two, you sort of see her redemption arc where she's so consumed by her pain and she's sort of in denial and it hits her later on and all that and then you start to pity her because yeah. you're like oh girl like you just you just didn't know she just didn't know yeah and the way he he just wouldn't let go of her let go of her let her be not just let go of her the way he would actively ruin her life ru try to ruin her her life or trigger her in some way like you're back with diana why are you so obsessed with this girl? Sorry, guys. Spoilers. But we're we're really getting into it. Um, I know you wanted to talk about the friendship dynamics. Yes. Because one comment that you kept saying throughout the whole show was that they're all mean to each other. Yeah, that's something that I, like, I realized watching, I found so jarring. I was like, they don't communicate. And they're so mean to each other. And it kind of made me think, like, I was like, was was I like that at 19? And like, I don't really think I was, but it's hard to be objective. And I think, I think realistically speaking, like, yeah, we probably do say harsh things when we're younger because we're so consumed by our own pain. And we're you're just not as empathetic when you're that young because, you're, you know, your hormones are running through the roof and you're growing yeah. up and it's weird and you're so confused and you're dealing with things. But it's very hard sometimes watching them be, so hard on each other when in reality like the girls issues would be i mean not non-existent but they'd be doing a lot better if they just communicate with each other because mm -hmm. deep down when they need one another they're there for each other you know as yeah. much as pippa can be super harsh brie and lucy are there for her when lucy loses it brie and pippa are here for her you know like and even when they argue they all come back to each other and clearly like they stay friends since from yeah. episode one you see that they're all guests at brie's wedding but I'm just like, I I do wonder if communicating is 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 really that difficult because I know that I had issues with communicating and you sort of, I mean, our one of our main arguments is my lack of communication. And in my opinion, you're over communication, you know? Like, no, but it's true. I'd be like, yeah. okay, but like I don't have to know your every thought. And you're like, yeah, but yeah, I want I need to know your thoughts because I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, it makes sense because as someone maybe who doesn't communicate, I think being met with someone who communicates i understand how it comes across as like overly yeah. communicating because it probably triggers you to to see someone communicate 
so comfortably. You know what I mean? And also the expectation that I'll communicate when when you think I should be ready, where I'm like, no, 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 not yet, not mm -hmm. yet. It's like, it's hard, but I'm like, but all of these girls are avoidant. None of them communicate. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know, like, as someone who <laughs> who's learned to communicate a lot better in the recent years, and obviously like, I'm sure like when I get into my 30s, I'll be even more like able to communicate, like hopefully. But I'm just like watching it for you because you're a communicator. Like what was it like for you watching that? It was, it, it, honestly, it was very triggering. I was so, I found myself really frustrated after each episode, but I kept watching it because it reminded me obviously of like a, a younger version of myself, yeah. an unhealed, <laughs> not an unhealed, but I guess like a, a less um, knowledgeable version of myself. Like I, I obviously when I was 18, 19, I don't know the things that I know now. So watching it, I was very much triggered because I, I feel like a lot of these pa patterns are still prevalent in our lives now. Like just because these kids are in college, it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't see people in their 20s and maybe even 30s. And sometimes I'm sorry, even 40s who act this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was very triggering. At first, I was like, why is it so triggering? But I think a main part was because also, like I said, like I saw myself in Lucy and I guess my anger towards Lucy was probably also towards Yourself. myself, my younger self. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was like, oof, been there, done that. Yeah, we all make these mistakes. But at the same time, I feel like I, I, I just felt like it was a very realistic portrayal, portrayal yeah. of a lot of these dynamics, whether it was friendships, relationships, whatever. And it, it just shows you how insecurities can lead to manipulation, can lead to jealousy, can lead to self-sabotage. It was a lot of self-sabotage on that show. I think the one thing that we saw... The main thing that we saw was self-sabotage. Don't you think? I think especially with the boys. Yeah. Especially with the boys, you see a level of self-sabotage that's terrifying. So I told you, so Wrigley reminds me a lot of a couple of people that I went to college with. Mm -hmm. It's like these really nice guys that have everything going for them. And they're sort of like, like the fun, crazy life of the party. Like they're always ready to crack a joke. I think maybe we haven't explored this, but I think we can both tell that Wrigley's deeply insecure. I think he feels so inadequate. Yeah. I feel like he covers it up by like this, this persona of like, woo, fun guy, which I still think he's like fun, everything. But I think it's a cover up for his feeling of insecurity regarding his brother. Inadequacy with his, um, I think he has a learning uh, impairment, he, is it? Or like he's... He's clearly not the brightest book. Yeah. Especially compared to, I think, Evan and... Um, Steven. Steven. Ugh. Like, he's not the smartest one. He knows he's not the smartest one. Yeah, so that's but he has why I think he makes going up for, him. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think watching, watching sort of Wrigley navigate through his insecurities and covering it up and, and trying to be all fun and, and, and sort of self-sabotaging with Pippa. Like, fine. But she was self-sabotaging with him as well in the beginning. Yeah, but remember I... when when they were at that party and she because so she, she thought that he didn't care about her yeah, 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 and yeah. that he was more casual about her. So she was like, OK, bet I'll match that energy, which a lot of times we do. And I was talking about this the other day, you want to be the cool girl, not just because you want to be the cool girl. It's your fear of rejection. You're so scared that you're going to get rejected or hurt. So you start to hurt the other person before they hurt you. So that's what she did, where she was like, oh, OK, you want to act cool? I can act cool. And then we saw how it bothered him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, so I think for 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 me, I think he, and this is a kind of spoiler for season two, but when things end between them, I think he lets everyone, he, he acts like, oh, I don't know that it's that bad. But you know that everyone's bullying Pippa. You're letting her be bullied. I think it's, I think it's self-sabotage because he's so Pip afraid. Again. Yeah, because he's so afraid that she could, because he wants her back. Like he wants her in his life, even as a friend, but he's so afraid to get hurt that he's just letting everyone hurt her instead of being vulnerable with her and mm -hmm. actually communicating. And it's like, to me, I'm like, you're so dumb because she doesn't do anything to you. The whole season so far, I'm just like, Pippa's not doing anything to you and you're just ruining it for yourself. Yeah. You can even have a friendship with someone that you want to be friends with. My question to you is, yes, have you ever been with someone who purposefully made you feel insecure? Yes. 
it was like a family thing. Like our families were setting us up. Like they mm-hmm. wanted to get married and all that. So it was very like, I was like, no, this person would never hurt me. And then this person made me feel so isolated so that I, I would, my friends would like be like, no, this isn't right. And I'd be like, no, you guys don't get it. And I'd get yeah. so mad to the point where you can no longer speak because if you speak and you tell your friends, then they'll just be like, this person is bad. This person has brainwashed you into thinking that everyone is against the two of you. And I, and I, that's why I think for me, Lucy is so triggering. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh my God. And I didn't see it at first. I didn't because I was like, oh my God, like I don't get how she's there. Yeah. Until I see season two and I'm like, oh my God. The reason I found you so unbearable is because I can't even bear to think of that time. And even with you, I don't like talking about that era. Yeah. Like I never talk about yeah. it. I don't want this person brought up. And if yeah. someone brings this person up, I get so triggered and upset because I'm like, anyone can get manipulated like that. Mm. So I I think you know why I was triggered because yeah. I told you this when I watched it. I kept telling you this reminded me of my relationship with said someone. <laughs> um, and it was kind of the same thing where this person was deeply insecure because we came from different backgrounds. Mm. We came from completely different backgrounds. Um, and, and this is why, honestly, like at the time, I wasn't that much younger, but at the time I didn't really believe that, you know, you have to get with someone who is on your level. I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, he can upgrade to my level. But that's not true because a lot of times, especially with men, when they think that you are superior to them, they will try to bring you down. And this is what happened in my relationship with this person is that he felt inferior to me. And it was very obvious throughout our relationship. He wanted to be with me, but he would always tell me like, what are you doing with me? You could do so much better than me. And I think that honestly, that alone should have been a telltale sign, like girl run. But of course me being the fixer wanted to stay in that. And then I realized over time he would intentionally try to make me feel insecure. And I felt like at some point I remember feeling like he was punishing me for no goddamn reason. I was good to this man. He was punishing you for being with him. He was punishing me for being better than him. And I didn't tell him I was better than him. He put me in a position where he he made me better than him. You know what I mean? Because he he was insecure. And I remember one of our arguments, I, I remember we started yelling and I told him, I was like, don't take out your insecurities on me. You're just projecting all your insecurities on me. And then it's it was ultimately the downfall of our relationship. But yeah, it was it destroyed me. And it was the same where I was isolated. My friends didn't like him. My my friends didn't understand why I was with him. And you're so alone at that and point. I was so alone. And that's and what they want. And he manipulated me. That's why I tell you, like, he reminded me so much of Stephen because he manipulated me into thinking like it was us against the world. Because yeah, we did have a deep connection in, in in certain things, like we connected so deeply, we had like a lot of like nice conversations, you know what I mean? But then when it came to, I guess, like our social status, it it really hit him a lot harder than I had wished it, it did, you know what I mean? And it ultimately became the downfall of that relationship. And also my self-esteem, my mental health, my self-worth. Like, that's why I'm telling you, like, sometimes, like, even though insecure people, like, for, for lack of a better word, like, you feel for them, but it does not excuse bad behavior, manipulative behavior, hurting someone else just because you've been wronged. It doesn't make it okay. And that's why I think there's a saying that hurt people hurt, hurt people. people. But I think it's just like, it's the idea that, like, if you, if you, if you touch someone that has an open wound, they're going to bleed on you. And mm-hmm. I think that's sort of what we were hit when when we both yeah. were with insecure people. Like insecure they just, and probably narcissistic. Oh, for sure, people. for sure. And honestly, like traits of a sociopath. Really, I don't yeah. not to not to diagnose, not to but... diagnose, but let's diagnose. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. You know, a lot Calling of a narcissistic, <laughs> a lot of people who have narcissistic tendencies or or show signs of NPD are like they they prey on people who are vulnerable. empaths, vulnerable givers, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they know that these people are going to probably try to fix them and or try to help the them or they can leave, them. see the best in them. That is, that is what made me stay in that relationship Same. for a lot longer than I should have is because I saw the potential. I didn't see what was in front of me. I didn't take him at face value, yeah. which I think is what we should learn to do is take people at face value. With Lucy and Steven, it's like, even after your breakup, you can't even be friends with him. Look at Brie. Like, Brie and Evan can be friends. 
Pippa and uh, Wrigley and Wrigley can be friends. What's going on? You know, like yeah. it's, and I think you're probably the same. Like you wouldn't be friends with any of of those horrible people that you yeah. know. But I think at the same time, like what these experiences have taught you is to look inwards and see why you're attracting these people. So I think in these situations, which I I, I think we saw Lucy in season two to try to do is become more self-aware. Yeah. Try to to work on herself and be yeah. more introspective and see why she was attracted to to Steven. But in her situation, I mean uh, we we still don't know what happens, but in in real life, yeah, being self aware, trying to understand why you're okay with this dynamic, is is this you know someone that you can actually build a future with, or are you going to be drained by this is person? This you know someone what I mean? You would even be friends with, like, and also like just beware of insecure people. I mean, they whether it's a relationship, it, it, any form of relationship, actually, like whether it's friendship yeah. or work or anything, like beware because if someone is insecure, most likely they're going to start getting jealous, and we yeah. know jealousy is like poison. And I think if someone's insecure, they have very loose boundaries, which I think that's one thing that I learned over time. Is yeah, I, I've this is how I've dealt with my insecurities is that I've set boundaries and I've been firm about my boundaries and also I've tried to set boundaries in a non-aggressive or passive aggressive way like that is one of the hardest lessons that I had to learn because I feel like the more you work on 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 your insecurities the more you learn how to set boundaries like healthy boundaries and be firm also about your boundaries because someone who doesn't have boundaries is not gonna respect other people's boundaries 100%. you know what i mean 100%. so i think that's one of the biggest lessons that i've learned over time and to also choose respect over attachment i think that's gonna have to be like a conversation for another day because we have to talk about how you will get attached well not you specifically but you know you get attached to people and you just don't leave because you're attached to the person and you hate the person, but you're still there. Yeah. Conversation for another day. Conversation mm. definitely for another day. We have a lot to talk about this topic, like mm. seeking validation and, and just not wanting to be alone. Give us your guys' recs because obviously we're obsessed with Tell Me Lies. And I think we could delve into different aspects of it because the show, psychologically speaking, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Like it's so fascinating and you do end up seeing yourself. And I think every single character except Steven thank God <laughs> and if you see yourself in Steven seek help, seek help. definitely seek help seek help no there there's so much to talk about with the show but we don't have time yeah as usual <laughs> Fortunately, we're out of time usual. we're out of time we gotta go if you enjoyed this episode like comment subscribe and if you don't I'm sending a sociopath on your asses Steven to be specific Steven uh, do you know a Steven I do oh god we're not in contact she's gonna send him your way <laughs> All right, you guys, we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.